Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg has claimed that Facebook was pressured by the U.S. government to censor content related to COVID-19, adding that he regrets the company's decision to accede to those demands. Zuckerberg also said that it was wrong to suppress the New York Post Hunter laptop coverage during last elections. Zuckerberg also said that he won't repeat his 2020 efforts to find local elections during this year's elections. In a letter to the U.S. House Judiciary Committee, Zuckerberg alleged that senior Biden administration officials repeatedly pressured Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, to censor content in 2021 during the COVID pandemic. Zuckerberg said that the government pressure was wrong and expressed regret that Meta was not more outspoken. The White House defended the administration's approach, calling it necessary to protect public health and safety. Zuckerberg also said that he won't be funding any candidate during the 2024 U.S. election cycle. The contributions made by Zuckerberg's 2020, which were designed to be nonpartisan, were accused of being unfairly distributed between left-leaning and light-leaning areas. Republicans had criticized the funding efforts as Zuckerbucks. House Judiciary Republicans touted the letter as a big win for free speech. Zuckerberg's letter comes at a crucial time in the U.S. presidential election race with Kamala Harris and Donald Trump neck to neck in the polls. All right. For more on this, we are now being joined by Elizabeth Loris, president of E. Loris Consulting from Washington, D.C. Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us and welcome back to We On. This was a bombshell, to say the least, when we learned about this letter last night. Monday evening, Meta was forced by U.S. government officials to censor comments related to COVID-19 and also to push the narrative that the Hunter Hunter Biden laptop story was, quote unquote, Russian misinformation. Why is Zuckerberg speaking after all these years? This is a little bit of a mystery, and I assume that we will hear a little bit more in a day or two, a few hours after this. Uh, Looking at the current environment in the United States now, President Biden has dropped out of his uh, re-election race for president, and there's a possibility that Trump might win. So with Biden out of the way, uh, Zuckerberg's meta really no longer needs to carry water for Biden Um, in the past. Uh, the Meta and you know Zuckerberg had donated, of course, to um, Democrats as well as some Republicans, but but a lot to you know Democrats and Democratic initiatives. And now with Biden out of the way, he doesn't have to um, couch out to him anymore. And you know, looking at very very recent events, the arrest in Paris of Telegram founder Pavel Durov. Uh, may have shaken him, uh, very influenced him, shall I say. The constant criticism that Elon Musk is getting for reformatting Twitter, now called X, to be really like a free-for-all and free speech, may have influenced him in that he's saying, you know, I can't allow my company to lose legitimacy by being forced by the U.S. government or political entity to put on our platform what we can and we can't. We can't let the government say what we can and cannot do. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that people are very distrustful of Facebook when it comes to political posts and whatnot. I mean, there's just this sort of whether it's justified or not and understanding that Facebook, you know, is not the place to go and people are really going towards X, formerly known as Twitter and other platforms as well. But here's the question. Shouldn't Mike Zuckerberg clarify the reasons for bowing down uh, to the Biden-Harris administration in the first place? I mean, you have the COVID situation, but then you also have that Hunter Biden laptop story, which some say was a clear interference in U.S. elections because many Americans didn't even know that it existed because of censorship. So, you know, where the House says that it's a win for free speech, but on the other hand, 
And, you know, Zuckerberg hasn't clarified why he even did that in the first place. That's a little bit dangerous territory for him, I think, especially as a business owner. I think he needs to be very careful in how he explains it. Uh, he doesn't want to lose a lot of his business by coming out and saying, you know, Biden bad or or Harris, who's associated with Biden. I don't know how close she was to any of this, but there is some association. So he wants to be careful in, you know, how he phrases this. So it, it, I think it would have been to his advantage, of course, to come out with some explanation rather than just like drop the letter and everyone now is speculating. But this also gets a, you know, a little bit more attention, I suppose, you know, if he really wants it. But what's interesting about this whole thing is that when Zuckerberg did succumb to Biden administration pressure, it did help Biden get reelected. I cannot say, you know, what percentage of persuaded people but it certainly helped and and they got away with it and so maybe now again that biden is removed from the political scene he's still president but he's removed from really the political scene zuckerberg might feel a bit more comfortable coming out and directly saying hey this was a problem the way that maybe he wasn't comfortable the past three years the timing is interesting Mm -hmm. Yeah, very interesting. And as you mentioned, we'll probably learn a lot more about this letter in the coming hours as well. Elizabeth Loris, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for that analysis. You're welcome. For all the latest news, download the WeOn app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.